Well, welcome everybody. My name is David from MortgageWebinars.com and I'm excited to share the five tips to increase your closing ratios on mortgage internet and direct mail leads. This is going to be an action-packed presentation. We've got five uh, rock solid tips that we believe can end up helping you to jack up your closing ratio and, uh, and really help you to improve your profitability, improve your time management so you're not wasting a bunch of time on irrelevant or unqualified leads. And today with me, I have a mortgage marketing guru. Jeff Bush is going to be our panelist today. And Jeff has done quite a few webinars with us. He's got 20 years of direct marketing experience. He's done over a billion pieces of direct mail for the mortgage industry. He's actually owned a mortgage banking company that closed over 5,000 loans uh, from 2000 to 2007 and he leveraged direct mail as his primary lead generation tactic. So he's actually been in the trenches doing what you're doing. Uh, and he has done, become a mortgage, mortgage call center expert where he's really helped to train and equip uh, a lot of loan officers to take in the incoming leads and to close those leads and to really understand the conversion rates that need to be done to maybe uh, improve profitability. And he's now the president of OverflowWorks.com, and he's doing an amazing job for some of the top mortgage companies in the industry. A lot of the top mortgage companies are calling on Jeff for his creative marketing solutions because of his inside, uh, his inside experience and in being able to generate high-quality leads and to improve on uh, the closing conversion ratio. So, Jeff, welcome to our webinar today. Yeah, thanks for inviting me, Dave. Appreciate it. So for those people that don't know you, uh, give them a little background on uh, where you came from, why you're uh, doing what you're doing now, and uh, tell them a little bit more about what they can expect to hear today. Well, I spent 15 years, as Dave said, in the direct mail business and um, in Orange County, California, and the president of the company I was working with um, sold the company and had a non-compete for three years, and uh, I was doing a lot of direct mail for, for big mortgage companies. Our biggest client at the time was Ditech. Ditech spent like $10 million on direct mail with us over a three year period. And they were funding 10,000 loans a month at the time. I think their advertising budget was like $100 million a year. And we got like 10 million of it. So I was watching these big mortgage companies and how they did direct mail to generate incoming calls and closing thousands of loans. So when we sold the direct mail company, um, I decided to give, uh, go into the mortgage business and give it a shot so I could work closer to home. So I started a little net branch and we went from, you know, two employees to, to 70 employees, like 30 loan officers. We're doing about 120 loans a month. We've got a $20 million warehouse line, opened up an escrow company, a real estate company. So from 2000 to 2007, I kind of, you know, bought direct mail for my own mortgage company. And with all my experience, I was spending about $200,000 a month on direct mail and um, tried everything. I mean, you know, from triggers to FHA, VA, you know, back then it was subprime and option arms. And um, so anyways, we were pretty successful. Direct mail really got us from doing five loans a month to 120 loans a month. So I've been on both sides of the business. I've, I've sold a lot of direct mail to mortgage companies. I bought direct mail. Uh, and, and then 2007 hit, the, the market just fell apart. Um, and, and we had a kind of a crash landing in 07. So shut the company down and kind of went back into direct mail and started Overflow Works about five years ago. And um, now we're back in the mail business. Um, the pictures Dave's showing here, we just uh, bought all of our own equipment. So we're doing our own printing and mailing. Those are pictures of lasers and inserters and folders and our mail truck. And I think that's 40 or 50,000 pieces of, of mail getting ready to go to the post office. Uh, our print center is in Temecula, California, the Southern California wine country. Our sales office is in Murrieta, California. Uh, we're getting ready to move into a, a building where everything will be together, sales and production. So kind of a long yeah, history that's great. on that. I have a poll open real quick and just to try to get some feedback from our participants today, I'm going to go ahead and launch that poll. If you can, go ahead and cast your vote uh, quickly. What I'm looking for is the uh, feedback on what are the biggest issues you're facing right now with marketing? If you can cast your vote on the top three answers that you feel are the ones that are appropriate to your current situation, I'll have Jeff address the, uh, the issues during our presentation and have him be able to give some more insights based upon his uh, nationwide lending experience with uh, some of the top mortgage companies and even some of the smaller organizations. And 
while I have that poll up, Jeff, talk a little bit more about your customer base and, and who you serve in terms of large and midsize and even some of the, the smaller boutique companies that really want to do some aggressive marketing. Yeah, so we have a um, big variety of clients and we have five mortgage clients that are spending about $100,000 a month with our company. Um, so that's the bulk of our business, five national clients that are all licensed in, you know, minimum 10 or 15 states. Some of them licensed, I think, in 48 states. Um, some have a thousand loan officers sitting in a call center waiting for phone calls and they're doing direct mail and internet leads and telemarketing and TV and radio. And you've heard the, the names before. Uh, they're, they're big companies all around the country. Um, so that's, you know, five big customers. And then we have about 25 customers that spend between $10,000 and $50,000 a month on direct mail. Uh, and then we probably have about 50 customers that are small guys that, that spend five grand with us every month and, and try to find an extra five loans a month, $1,000 a loan. You know, brokers, loan officers that are working out of their house. Uh, we have a ton of, of smaller clients that, um, that are using direct mail successfully. So kind of a, a mix, big guys, medium and small. Great. Well, it looks like that the uh, the number one thing is uh, lead quality is poor. And I know that you have uh, three uh, three areas that you uh, talk about in terms of in improving uh, lead quality and conversion. You want to share that with us now? Yeah, lead quality. I mean, in that's of, uh, in terms of the list, man. I mean, I know that list is a big part of it. And uh, the marketing piece is a big part of it, but what what would you say to those that are maybe struggling with poor lead quality right now? Well, when I think of lead quality, I think of people buying a bunch of internet leads and, you know, they're buying exclusive leads and then they're being sold to 40 mortgage companies who are making photocopies of the leads and handing it out to all their loan officers. So you might have 400 people calling them. So lead quality on the internet leads is tough. Um, there's so many people calling them. There's so many resold and, um, you know, cleaning up those lists, trying to find some exclusive relationships on internet leads. You know, our specialty is, is incoming phone calls from direct mail. And if we mail the right list of FHA, VA, conventional borrowers, you know, um, you take a hundred inbound phone calls, you're going to close 10 loans. So, so there's 90 people that call you that are not going to close. And there's obviously, um, you know, credit issues, income issues, in the shopping rate and fees. So, um, you know, depending on what your closing ratio is, I don't know if you buy 100 leads and you're closing one, or if you're closing 10, it is kind of a numbers game. You're never going to get the perfect list, but we can certainly work on qualifying the list, whether we go get credit scores from the credit bureau or scroll through your internet leads and make sure that they didn't already fund a loan or make sure they're a homeowner, you know, make sure, look at what their rate is and credit, you know, so we can improve some of the, uh, you know, the quality of the lead. That's great. Well, let's jump into our presentation and start talking about some of these tips to increase the, increase the closing ratio. The very first tip that you have is the live lookup pin. Talk a little bit more about how this works inside the, of some of the strategies you've been using. See, so yeah, after listening to, we record a lot of the phone calls that come in to our clients so we can listen to the quality of the call and hear what interest rate they're paying and see how the loan officers are doing on talking to these borrowers. It always just just irked me when loan officers would take an incoming phone call from direct mail, and the first thing they ask is, you know, what's your address? And the person invariably would say, hey, you just mailed me a letter, and you're asking me my address. You've got my address. So after hearing that, you know, a hundred times, and um, and hearing these loan officers, you know, the phone call starts out, I got a letter, and I'm interested, and the loan officer has to start asking, you know, 15 questions: What's your income? Who's your lender? What's your rate? Um, you know, what's your credit score? And it just gets into this barraging to the borrower of all these questions. So we built a system. Uh, this cost us about $30,000 to build, but we have PIN numbers, individual PIN numbers on every letter. So when the borrower calls in, uh, the loan officer just asks, hey, what's the PIN number on your letter? The borrower reads it to them. They go to our website and put in that PIN number and they get every bit of information they would ever want. Um, on that borrower without having to ask all the questions. So the, the PIN number, again, it's, it's overflowworks-lookup.com. And once you look this up, um, Dave, I'm still seeing the uh, the host, the, the poll results are on my screen. It, should I? Hold on just one second. Let me see if I, if you click on, let me go ahead and shut that down. I apologize. 
No problem. I don't know if everybody was seeing that or just me. So the first thing when you put in this PIN number, the first thing you look at is a Google Maps picture of the house, which is kind of nice. You can talk to this particular homeowner about their nice boat sitting in the harbor. It looks like this is on the ocean in Newport Beach. Um, so you see a picture of their house, but you see exactly who's on title, if it's husband, wife, spelling of their name, the legal address, you see property taxes, and you can get all this information free from title, and some of you are already looking up these leads, but um, this is gonna go through a lot more information. It tells you their, their last loan, um, when they got it. Hold um, on. No problem. Here we go. So you, you kind of, you get everything just sitting there without having to ask all the questions. You can go right into the you know, average income for this zip code is $225,000 a year, the average FICO score. So we are um, you know, offering this tool to help loan officers just connect with the borrower. So it increases the closing ratio dramatically. Everybody that's using this loves it. So that's the PIN number. Uh, another thing it tells you is all the open liens against the property and it gives you a lot of information like um, this particular person has an adjustable rate loan. So it tells you the index, the margin, the caps, when the loan's adjusting, what their current interest rate is, who their lender is, when they got it, the loan amount. So this is a nice little feature when, um, when somebody tells you, hey, I'm paying three and a quarter percent rate and it's a 30 year fix and you pull this up and go, no, you've got an adjustable loan and it's gonna adjust in whatever this year and this month. So kind of a nice tool if they have second mortgages against the property, everything pops up right here um, on the open lien report. And I think there's, there might be one more report that shows comparable sales. I don't know if we put it in this presentation, but it shows you the six houses that recently sold in their area. So you can get a really good idea of what the value of the home is. Um, instantly. So all this is kind of at your fingertips. So this has probably been the, the biggest increase in closing ratios for our uh, loan officers, mortgage companies is just using this system. Um, sometimes we assign PIN numbers to all the internet leads so that you can pull all this information up before you outbound call the internet leads that you're buying. So we can assign this system to that. It's, um, yeah, it's a pretty awesome tool. Yeah, one of the questions submitted, Jeff, is just the accuracy. Um, what's the accuracy of this particular content? Well, this is coming from, you know, First American Title so is, a, is a big part of this report. So the accuracy is, is you know, as accurate as title is. I mean, if there's a loan recorded against the property, um, it's updated every 30 days. So, you know, it's, it's all coming right off the legal property address and everything recorded against the, the property. So it's really accurate. I haven't had any problems really, unless they just refied a week ago and we just didn't pick up a new loan. That happens again. That's part of that 90% of the calls that don't close, you know. You bet. Uh, any other final comments on the uh, number one tip, which is the lookup pin, Jeff? You know, I no, no other comments. Um, you know, I will tell you that this will also refer you out to their six neighbors who recently purchased a loan, you'll have names and addresses. So we've got some cross marketing to the neighborhood that we're starting to do. Um, once you fund a borrower, we can mail everybody on the street and let them know that you just funded a loan for their neighbor and um, kind of like a mortgage, uh, you know, kind of like what realtors do, you know, farming an area for, for loans. So I'm kind of excited about that. Yeah. Another question uh, from Nick is that uh, when he's looking at uh, loan info, when title, when he's using title data, um, he has uh, kind of a random success rate. Uh, about 5% of the profiles have actual information on the system. Um, any idea on what the uh, completion percentage is on title, title data? So if I understand the question, I mean, we've mailed millions of pieces and looked up thousands of PIN numbers and it's pretty rare that we don't find the person's name, address, and loan information. I mean, if they're out there, I mean, I've literally had maybe two complaints that when we took our mailing list and matched it up to this database, it didn't find the right match. And it could be, you know, the, the house has got the kids, is in the kid's name instead of the, so very, very rare that we miss something on this, so. Right, well, let's go to the next one. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about uh, converting internet leads. Talk a little bit more. This slide has a lot of text on it, but um, what's the lowdown on this particular information? 
So I was at LeedsCon, the big lead generation show up in Las Vegas a few months ago. I don't know if anybody else on the call was there, but a friend of mine, Drew from iLeads, um, actually presented this information. And basically what he's saying is that out of uh, 2 million, 2.3 million mortgage internet leads that were generated over the last year, in a, in a nine month period, only 5% of those leads turned into a funded loan. And, and what's interesting about that, so, so a 5% close ratio on internet leads overall. However, that was all the mortgage companies that were calling uh, the same leads. So it's not one company's closing ratio, it's every company that was calling on these leads only closed 5%. Now, this report does not include LendingTree because LendingTree didn't make their numbers uh, public. So the LendingTree leads I know convert a little bit higher. Um, you also have to pay them, I believe, on every funded loan. So um, they're, they're a little bit better leads. But you know, 2.3 million internet leads and only 5% turned into a funded loan and that's between all the companies calling them. So that means there's 95% you know, still out there that were interested in the loan that just never completed it. And this tells, um, you know, the loan volume by loan type from internet leads that are funding uh, was at $25 billion. So this was over a, a nine month period. It shows kind of the top states where the most internet leads are turning into funded loans. So this really opened up my eyes to why we decided to start taking our clients' internet leads and mailing them a direct mail letter. You know, as soon as they get the internet lead, we mail a letter. Um, we mail letters to internet leads that are six months old and we still get a huge response rate and a lot of closed loans from internet leads that are six months old, nine months old, a year old. We've been going out all the way to a year and it's amazing that these people, these people go online and fill out that they're interested in refinancing and never end up doing anything. I mean, you know, hundreds of thousands of them. So we created this direct mail letter and started mailing to um, internet leads and instead of getting a half a percent response on direct mail, um, the best one we've done so far that just kind of finished up a couple weeks ago, we had a 4.2 response rate. So instead of getting 50 calls on 10,000 letters, we got 420 inbound phone calls from people that, that were still out there interested in getting a loan. Um, so, you know, we mail new internet leads, old internet leads. So this has kind of become a pretty big strategy for us as a company, uh, mailing these warm leads versus just a cold list. And we have aged internet leads all over the country. I think we've got, you know, a few hundred thousand of them that we can mail to. Um, it's kind of interesting. And here's another example of another um, letter that we're, we're mailing to internet leads. Um, it's, it's kind of a little envelope hand addressed with a 49 cent stamp. You know, it's funny with direct mail, let's just say the average price of direct mail is 60 cents a piece. We can put that letter in a big cardboard UPS envelope. We can hand address the envelope. We can put stamps on it. I don't care how much money we spend increasing the quality of the mail piece or the envelope. Very rarely do you ever double your response rate. I mean, you might do some little things on direct mail like the live stamp and hand address that might increase your response by 50%. But the problem is all these things with the mail piece end up increasing your cost by 50% or doubling your cost. So I don't usually suggest spending a lot of money increasing the cost of your direct mail campaign with all these cardboard envelopes and stamps and hand addressing. As, but if we change the data and instead of spending 10 cents a name on, on a mailing list, if you were to spend a dollar or two dollars on the mailing list, that's where we can get you know, 500% increase in response. It's all the data is so much more important than what you're mailing. Uh, everybody's always focusing on the mail piece. And what we're seeing is, is, you know, finding a list of people that have already raised their hand and said they're interested in, in doing a, a VA refi, an FHA refi. It's worth spending a lot of money on data uh, and not so much on the mail piece. So that's just been our experience. It seems like a no-brainer, Jeff. What prevents people from not taking that step to uh, taking a chance on a strategy like this? Is it just the lack of belief that it's going to work? You know, I, it's amazing to me. I've been uh, pitching this to big mortgage companies for like two years now. And a lot of mortgage companies 
they buy, let's say they buy a thousand internet leads and they're like, Jeff, we've got phone numbers and email addresses. We're calling them 30 times. We're emailing them. Why would I ever mail a direct mail letter? It's so old school and we've already got their phone number and they just can't see spending another dollar to send them a mail piece when they spent 10, 20 bucks on the internet lead and they have their phone number. But um, so a lot of big mortgage companies just haven't seen the value. But I will tell you that there is a big national lender out there who buys um, 300,000 internet leads a month, a month. And they are mailing every single one of them now and getting like a one to 2% response. So some of them are starting to come around and, and pick this up. So I, I don't know why people don't see the value in mailing a letter to someone who said that they were interested. They just don't want to spend the extra money. Um, but I have presented this to some big mortgage companies and they've turned me down and, and the few guys that have hit us up or agreed to, to test this are just blown away by it. So one question from the participants from Todd is the uh, mailing credit data. What's your thoughts on that? So there's only two places to get a mailing list in the mortgage industry. One is public record data, and, and that's what we mainly use, but we put a lot of extra time into cleaning up that dirty, old title data. You know, you'll find getting a list from your title rep. There's people that have refied a year ago, and in your title mailing list division of title, says that there's no new loan in the last two years. So um, we mail some credit bureau data. It's more expensive. There's a lot more compliance around it. So a huge disclaimer. Um, we have found recently our cost per funded loan at the end of the day is cheaper just mail on public record data. But if you were to call me and say, listen, Jeff, I want to market second mortgages and they've got to have a 720 and above FICO score to qualify of course, we're going to go to the credit bureau and get that data because now you're talking really high FICO scores. But, you know, FHA, VA is not really FICO driven. Um, so 90% of the people on our list are above a 620 score. So we don't have a lot of problems with, you know, not qualifying. So we can get credit data, but most of our clients are mailing public records and having more success because the data is cheaper. And we get, you know, just because you have good credit doesn't mean that you increase your response rate. Credit bureau data a lot of times is a lower response. It's a little more qualified. Uh, you, you take the real low FICO people out, um, but it kind of depends on the application and what product you're marketing, quite honestly. Yeah, another question before we move on to number three is Michael asked question, will this system work for reverse mortgages? So in mailing direct mail leads, I would think that internet or reverse mortgages would probably be the, one of the best, right? Just with the older population needing that uh, second reminder or opportunity to connect with them. I've done direct mail for reverse mortgage for like 10 years. I, I used to do direct mail for American Advisors Group. Uh, I've done it for one reverse, Quicken's uh, reverse mortgage company. Those are the top two in the nation. Reverse mortgage direct mail is very tough. It's very saturated. Um, it's hard to find the right people that are in the market for a reverse mortgage. Um, so it's not a high response rate, but obviously because my clients are making fifteen dollars to $20,000 per funded loan, you know, if we can get two or three loans funded for $5,000, that's a huge win. So I'll just say that um, I can do reverse mortgage mail. It's very tough. The response rates are very low. We mail 10,000 letters. We might only get 20 to 30 phone calls, a 0.2 to 0.3 response rate. But if you can fund two or three loans, it's a, it's a huge ROI still. And we have some, some unique mail pieces and data sets uh, for reverse mortgage. I actually have a, a list of seniors who went online and applied for, um, well, they, they filled out an internet lead saying they were interested in a reverse mortgage loan. So they're already interested and that's a pretty hot list. There's not a lot of those leads in the nation, but um, we have, we're having some success in, in mailing internet leads for reverse. And just to confirm, Jeff, you're saying that if an organization was to mail their internet leads, uh, you're thinking that they could actually double their conversion rate on those internet leads. That was the claim. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So our average response rate on direct mail to a cold list is a half a percent. Our average response in mailing internet leads right now, our average response is about a 3% response. So it's six times the response rate. Now it's going to cost you probably three times as much money to do your direct mail campaign to internet leads. But if you get six times the response rate, and the big bonus is after we're done with the mailing, we send you all these leads and you have 100% phone numbers you can call and you have email addresses. So six times the response on direct mail, 
uh, our record is, is over a 4% response, which is eight times the response. But you have phone numbers and, and email addresses you can contact after the mailing's over. And when you call these people and say, hey, I'm following up on the letter that I mailed you, they might connect getting that direct mail piece from you with your name on it when you call, so it's a little warmer phone call. Great. Moving on to number three, expiration dates on leads. Explain a little bit more on your thought process, Jeff. So when these loan officers get these incoming calls or get these leads, if they think that they own that lead, they're not as, um, as apt to put the sense of urgency into it. So when I owned my mortgage company and I was pushing a thousand calls a month into the building and closing a hundred loans, I was always, Hey, what, what about those other 900 that didn't close? I think my average closing ratio at my mortgage company was actually like 80% close ratio. And I had done the math because I was spending $200,000 a month on direct mail. If I could increase my closing ratio from 8% to 9%, if I could move the needle 1%, I personally was going to make an extra million dollars for the year. So I put a lot of time into trying to improve my closing ratio instead of just mailing more and getting my cost down on, on mail. And one of the most effective things I did was when the call came in, the loan officer had three days to collect a social security number, run credit and send a loan package out. Um, I mean, I'm going back to 07. A lot of things have changed where that's nine years ago when, when I shut down the company, but having an expiration date on the leads. So when the loan officer gets the lead, they have like three days to work it, even on the incoming direct mail calls. If they don't get anywhere with that borrower, reroute that lead to somewhere, someone else. And if the loan officer knows they're gonna lose the lead in three days, they tend to have more of a sense of urgency on working that lead. So put an expiration date on your leads, that's, that's crucial and have like a little rework team in your office that um, reworks these leads. Sometimes just a different voice, uh, male, female, um, different personality connects and you can increase your closing ratio and, and make a lot more money on your on your marketing dollar great let's move on to number four train or let go of people who can't convert pretty uh, straightforward but talk a little bit more about the cut line Jeff what I found is um, you know certain loan officers just are really good over the telephone they, they can warm up to a borrower quickly they can establish rapport and they're closers they can close that borrower on moving forward on a loan. So obviously watching your sales team, your loan officers and making sure you pay attention to what their close ratio is. I mean, it was pretty drastic at my company. You know, John would take a hundred phone calls and close 19 loans. Um, and, and, and Jack would take the same hundred phone calls and closed one loan. So if they're not closing at a 5% or higher you know, ratio, you just got to get rid of them or, or, you know, train them, see if you can work with them. But what I found through the years is some of the best self-gen loan officers that work with realtors and they're really good at establishing um, relationships with CPAs and referral partners and realtors. And when that realtor warms up the borrower and sends them to you and, and you pre-qualify them, they're very good at that. But you throw that very good loan officer on the telephone and make him answer an incoming phone call when the borrower's like, what's your rate? What are your closing costs? And they're really shopping them and there's no relationship. A lot of times those really good loan officers cannot close leads. They're just not the right personality to, to do that. So I have some, some tips on hiring the right loan officers and different uh, sales profiles that I do to find the people that can close at a, at a profitable level on, on leads. So Great. If you have any questions on the uh, options number three and four, uh, putting an expiration date on leads and training or let go of people who can't convert, please throw those in the Q&A and uh, we'll move on, Jeff, to uh, number four and we'll come back and answer questions in just a moment. So letter from the president, number five. Yeah, unfortunately, this was my highest response direct mail letter I've ever done. And what it was is the, the thousand phone calls that, that came into my building every month from direct mail. Uh, we would mail, I would mail this letter to the people that called us. And I would say, thanks for, for calling us. I want to make sure we can answer all your questions and that you had all the information. Please call Jeff Bush, the president of direct funding, my company. Um, 
it was amazing on a thousand letters. I mean, I'd probably get a hundred phone calls a month coming in. And usually what it was is, Hey, I called your company, you know, and uh, nobody ever called me back or I called your company and they ran my credit and I never heard back from them. So some of these people had, had horrible credit and they didn't qualify and the loan officer just never called them back, which was kind of sad. So I, um, I encourage somebody at a high level in the company to mail a letter to every single one of the calls that come in, every internet lead that comes into your building, and just kind of take the pulse on how your team is following up and responding. You get some really great feedback from the borrowers mailing this letter once they call your company. So um, I was doing this for Ditech uh, back in the day, right about time GMAC bought out Ditech. Um, they were getting, oh my gosh, they were getting 100,000 phone calls a month, I believe, into their building and 10,000 funded loans. So we would mail a letter similar to this to every incoming call from television, billboards, internet, radio. And every single month, this letter had the lowest cost per funded loan because the people were already interested and just needed a little extra push. And mailing a letter to them was, um, was great. So, um, this one's kind of dumbed down a little, but I remember getting phone calls back in the day. Jeff Bush, the president, are you really the president of this company? Because at that time, I think President Bush was in office and it was kind of funny letter from the president. So anyways. Uh, Jeff, real quick question uh, from David is asking uh, the disc profile. What's the best for salespeople in your perspective? Did you have a common, uh, a common letter that uh, you referenced as being uh, the closers? Was it a high D? Yeah, so I've used DISC for 20 years, and I've probably put thousands of people through DISC. And I don't care what product it is, whether you're selling loans or you're selling you know, gold or you're on the phone or you're out in the field, you have to have high D or I, preferably both. So the DISC, you know, um, dominates the D and influences the I the best salespeople for any job, but, but even for mortgage loans and specifically working on leads is the high DI profile is absolutely the best. If you don't have one or the other, honestly, you're going to struggle in sales unless you work 10 times as hard. And, um, you know, and it's a, so high DI is what I always look for. And I got to the point where if they didn't score high on that disc. They just, you know, were not closers. And a lot of loan officers are very analytical, high C's kind of engineers and accountants. And the analytical side of the business is great for running numbers, but it does not help establish rapport and close people on the phone. That's not that. So I can get into DISC if you want to talk about it. Um, I, I will put this out there. If you Let's say you had 100 loan officers. If I had your 100 loan officers take the DISC profile, I would be able to determine with like 99% accuracy without knowing your sales team, who your top 10 loan officers are in the company. I mean, I would make that claim just from looking at the disc profile. It's that strong, you know? Um, so we, we could talk about some, some hiring and I'd love to, you know, show people what I've learned through disc. It's been very effective for, for my company here and at the mortgage company. Good. Well, you've got a couple bonus tips here that are a little bit more on the, uh, cutting edge of technology and uh, social. Talk a little bit more about them, Jeff. So when we direct mail 10,000 people, we'll find email addresses on about 5,000 of them. And once we have their email or their name and address, we can go on their Facebook page and post on their Facebook page. And it's funny, I went home a couple months ago on my personal Facebook and there's Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans advertising on my Facebook, and which was really interesting. Um, so if we know they have an FHA or a VA loan, we would probably design a posting all about their military service and post VA information. You know, we know what kind of loan they have, you know, um, we know where they live. We've got their email address. So posting on Facebook, this only costs, you know, literally like a few hundred dollars. So sometimes to increase the direct mail campaign, we'll direct mail them a letter. We'll post on their Facebook. We'll send display ads to their home computer. We'll call them. We'll email them. We use like five or six different channels to market to these people to um, just increase the response overall and lower that cost per funded loan. So Rocket Mortgage is the first one I've seen doing this. It's starting to take off, but uh, they're the only ones I've seen on my home Facebook page. Um, so pretty, pretty interesting. 
So the idea of using uh, social media and then doing the IP targeted location directed ads is something that you have the ability to incorporate into a campaign? Yeah, like I said, every 10,000 people we mail, we can find 5,000 emails, we can find 5,000 um, home computer IP addresses and deliver up these banner ads um, right on their computer, whatever websites they're going on. Um, I'm doing it in the mortgage business, the car business, and the solar business. And uh, it's cheap. It's, it's, you know, three cents to do it versus, you know, 50 or 60 cents for direct mail. So it's, it's not a huge response, but it's worth the money. And it's kind of nice to have that multi-pronged approach where you're hitting them at all angles in their mailbox, on their computer, on Facebook, on their cell phone. Uh, so phone calls. Yeah, we have a couple of questions I want to get to in just a moment, Jeff, that have to do with phone calls. But uh, this is a really interesting slide. Uh, this is a national lender that you have done uh, direct mail for who's done a considerable amount using lots of different types of loan types for their marketing. And just walk us through the, uh, the numbers here that you think are appropriate for the audience today. Well, a lot of our big clients have big staff to be able to track all these campaigns. So if you look at the, uh, if you look at the first slide up here, um, the description of what mail, direct mail campaign we did, we did a HARP, not owner occupied, advertised a 30 year fix. We put it in a number 10 window envelope. Client spent 13 grand, mailed 25,000 letters, got a 0.9, almost a 1% response, 224 inbound phone calls, funded 17 loans. So the average loan amount, the cost per lead, and the cost per funded loan. So we kind of break down, you know, HARP, VA, FHA, cash out, reverse, um, conversion. So we're doing a lot of different campaigns and we're tracking the response rate, but also the closing ratio to figure out at the end of the day, what's our cost per funded loan, because that's all that matters. You know, can I get a $5,000 profit loan funded for around $1,000? That's our goal. Now, some big national lenders, uh, people you see on TV and radio, and you know, they're spending 2,000, sometimes even $3,000 per funded loan because they're doing 20,000 loans a month. They can afford to spend that. Uh, they're banking their loans, so they're making a lot of money. They might be making three, four, five points on these FHA, VA, Govy loans. So they have the money to do that. But our goal is to get around $1,000 a loan. You know, sometimes in, in bigger states and more saturated states like California, we come in at $1,500 a loan. But that's really um, what this slide is about. So the totals at the bottom are basically showing, you know, we mailed 800,000 letters. Uh, I think it was the fourth quarter of last year, you know, clients spent $440,000 on direct mail. Their average response rate on all these campaigns was a 0.63, so just over a half a percent response. They took 5,000 inbound phone calls, funded 351 loans. So their cost per funded loan was $1,254. Now this lender was spending over $2,000 per funded loan, so they were extremely happy with this number of 1254. Um, you know, everybody's a little different. There could be guys out there doing, you know, a thousand pieces of mail and getting three loans funded. So their cost per funded loan is like $300, but you can't scale that. That's not something that, that like this lender funding five, 10,000 loans a month is ever going to be able to do. So, um, you know, we can help you track the campaign. If you send me your funded loan list, I can match it back to the mailing list and see, okay, how many loans funded from our mailing list so we can come up with all these if you need some help tracking it so great well we have uh, a couple of questions here but just before uh, if some people need to break off uh, a little early um, best way to reach out for a potential uh, sample count in their area some marketing sample marketing pieces best contact information is what's on the screen yeah you can call me at the 800 number I'm sure I'm gonna be pretty busy today so it's probably better to just send me an email with maybe when you're available and, and myself or my sales manager, or one of my sales team can reach out and kind of pull all the numbers in the states that you're licensed in for, you know, FHA, VA, whatever products you're looking to market. So I would say it's the best contact is just send me an email and I'll get back to you quickly and set up a, a conference call to go look at your specific market and what we could do. Great. Well, let's uh, answer a couple of questions. Uh, one of the questions were uh, was based on uh, data and whether or not phone numbers 
uh, we're included with that. And if there's any benefits to doing outbound calls uh, after the mailer's been sent, and if you uh, experienced any of the outbound marketing, uh, telemarketing calls. Yeah, so let me think how to, how to answer that. About There's about 10% of America that we can get phone numbers on that are not on the do not call list. Um, so if we did a, a hundred thousand direct mail pieces for you, we would have 10,000 phone numbers that you could legally call. Uh, so we can provide phone numbers to you. They're typically home phone numbers. Um, we can get cell phone numbers, but there's some regulation around that calling cell phones. Um, so absolutely we can get phone numbers. I do have clients that have dialers that dial the phone numbers right on top of the direct mail and do very well with it. There's a lot of laws that have come out in the last couple of years. Just they just keep coming on on you know do not call and uh, TCPA um, the telephone you know laws. So you got to be careful. But it's worth calling. I don't think the loan officers are going to make a thousand phone calls to get on the phone with a hundred people to hopefully find ten leads that turn into one or two funded loans. I don't know too many loan officers that'll make a thousand outbound phone calls. So if you don't have a dialer or you don't have telemarketers, I wouldn't suggest wasting a loan officer's time dialing all these people. I would just direct mail and take the inbound phone call and close the inbound phone calls. But if you have a telemarketing team, a dialer, you can certainly get phone numbers from us, load them up and, and you can make that work. So. Um, I know that your primary uh, clientele, Jeff, is the large to mid-sized companies, but there's some folks that are here today that are looking at doing that, you know, spend 5000 generate another five loans, and, you know, spend $1,000 in marketing. Uh, is that pretty much the minimum that you would say uh, is required to really make this thing a, a workable solution for some of these smaller players? I mean, yeah, we suggest a $5,000 spend just so we can show you five funded loans. I mean, you might get 50 phone calls and close five. Anything less than that, you know, it, um, I don't know if I can guarantee the numbers. I mean, we have a couple clients like loan officers out of their house that'll give us, I think, $3,750 to mail 5,000 letters, you know, and they'll get 25 calls and, and they're trying to close, you know, three or four loans, but sometimes that economy to scale just doesn't get to the number where you can fund. So minimum order $3,750. Most of our clients, we set it at 5,000 or more. Um, so we can hit that number, make sure we get five loans funded for five grand, you know. Um, I will also say that uh, uh, I've got my call center manager on the Philippines on this call with us right now. We set up a call center in the Philippines so we can do live call transfers. So we can, uh, we can dial VA borrowers and transfer them right to your phone line with the PIN number, pulling up all their information. And, um, you know, we're selling live call transfers right now for around $99 a lead. So for five grand, you're guaranteed 50 leads of people that are interested in refinancing through live call transfers, totally different than direct mail. Um, but that's, uh, you know, that's a big department for us that we're growing right now. A lot of people are doing both, they're direct mailing and they're calling. So I can talk to you about live call transfers. I can talk to you about internet leads, um, digital marketing, you know, whatever, you know, whatever you're thinking you're, you're linking into. Jeff, last question, uh, just in terms of uh, timeframes, because you, you guys handle everything from A to Z, um, do you have the upper hand on turn times and being able to turn a, a campaign out? I mean, if you call us today and you move pretty fast and, and put a little bit of time into this, you know, we would uh, create a proof, pull your data, print and mail your job in a week. And then depending if you're in the West Coast or East Coast, the mail is going to take anywhere from one to two weeks to, to reach the homes. So I tell people if we're moving quickly and you called me today, we could have your phones ringing in three weeks. Um, you can upgrade your campaign to first class mail and have your phones ringing in two weeks. But first class mail is, is 12 cents more per piece for postage. So the cost jumps up substantially. Um, so you know, two to three weeks if we're moving quickly, you know, um, if, if it's going to take a week to get the letter approved through compliance, it might be four weeks to get your phones ringing. Um, so really just getting that letter signed off by compliance is usually our only, you know, delay on, on getting something out there quick. Great. Well, thanks so much for your time today and expertise. And if you uh, forgot those uh, five uh, strategies Jeff talked about, uh, we will provide a recording to those of you that email Jeff Bush at overflowworks.com 
where you can call in and request it at 800-784-5194. Just to recap though, the first one was the lookup pin, uh, inserting a lookup pin number on your uh, reference letters to be able to bring back and go through the lookup system that Overflow Works provides. Mailing your internet leads was number two. Putting an expiration date on leads was number three. Establishing a cut line on loan officers that are not converting and closing and uh, having a more quality staff obviously will increase your closing ratio. Number five was letter from the president. And then the bonus ones were more of the, uh, uh, the strategy where you're building around social and uh, targeting leads online, whether it's uh, Facebook um, ads or maybe there's a Facebook connection back to an individual borrower. So thanks so much, Jeff, for being on the webinar today. Thanks uh, for participants for sticking around. And uh, we look forward to having you guys join us for another upcoming uh, mortgage webinar soon. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks a lot.